Hello students. Today we will be studying the poem Wind written by Subramanya Bharti. This poem Wind is from the Beehive which is the textbook in English for class 9th. This poem was originally written in Tamil by Subramanya Bharti but later translated into English by A.K. Ramanujan. Subramanya Bharti was a Tamil writer, poet, journalist, activist and a social reformer. He was a pioneer of modern Tamil poetry and is considered as one of the greatest Tamil literary figures of all times. You all know that the wind is a natural phenomenon. In this poem, the poet is talking to the wind. He has described the power of the wind and tells us that the wind causes destruction, that is, it is destructive in nature. He has symbolized or linked this destructive power of the wind to the adversities or hardships of life. According to him, it is the stronger people who overcome these adversities and emerge out even stronger, but the weak people cannot withstand these challenges and succumb to them. They become weaker, they fail and ultimately break down. A very strong and powerful message is conveyed through this poem. It is that we should be mentally tough and physically strong so that we can emerge as winners in this journey of life. Life which is full of hardships, challenges, adversities and obstacles. The poet further says that we should make these challenges and adversities are friends. That is, we should make the wind our friend so that we can cope up with the hard and tough situations in life. So, in short, we can say that this poem written by Subramanya Bharti inspires us to face the hardships and challenges of life with courage, grit, and firm determination. Now, let us read the first 12 lines of the poem. Wind comes softly. Don't break the shutters of the windows. Don't scatter the papers. Don't throw down the books on the shelf. There, Look what you did. You threw them all down. You tore the pages of the books. You bought rain again. You are very clever at poking fun at weaklings. Frail crumbling houses, crumbling doors, crumbling rafters, crumbling wood, crumbling bodies, crumbling lives, crumbling hearts. The wind god winnows and crushes them all. The poet begins by telling the wind to blow softly and not to be harsh. Children, when a strong wind blows, it causes a lot of destruction. So, the poet is asking the wind to blow slowly and not to break the shutters of the windows, not to scatter the papers and not to throw down the books kept on the shelf. He says, Look what you have done. You have thrown all the books down and have even torn the pages of the books. You have also bought along with you the rain. You here stands for the wind. Further complaining, he says that the wind is very clever at making fun of weaklings, that is, a weak person, animal or plant. The power of the wind crumbles down weak houses, weak doors, weak rafters, 
Rafters are sloping beams supporting a roof. Weak wood, weak humans, other weak living things and even crushes weak hearts. Here the word crumbling is repeated to emphasize that everything weak crumbles or crushes in the face of strong winds. The poet is emphasizing the fact that it is the weak that fall down and get crushed by the powerful wind. Further referring the wind to as wind god, he says, the wind god winnows and crushes them all. Just like winnowing separates the grain from the chaff, similarly the wind god winnows or separates the weaker people from the stronger ones. The weaker fall down and get crushed by the wind god. Wind symbolizes challenges, hardships, adversities in life as told to you earlier. Therefore, it is the weak that fall and get crushed when faced with the hardships and adversities. In the remaining lines of the poem, the poet wants us to make friends with the wind. That is, we should accept adversities and challenges like our friends. Let us now read the remaining lines. He won't do what you tell him. So come, let's build strong homes. Let's join the doors firmly. Practice to firm the body. Make the heart steadfast. Do this and the wind will be friends with us. The wind blows out weak fires. He makes strong fires roar and flourish. His friendship is good. We praise him every day. In these lines, the poet tells us that problems and challenges will not listen to us. They will come in our lives. So, to prevent destruction, we should be prepared. Therefore, let us build strong homes. Let our doors be firmly closed so that the wind does not enter. We should make ourselves physically strong to face the challenges of life. We should also make our hearts steadfast. This means that we should be prepared to face adversities and be confident in our understanding that God will give us the strength we need to face these adversities. If we do this, Soon we will become friends with the wind, that is, with the adversities of life. Our friendship with these adversities will make us happy as it will help us to become stronger. Challenges help us to become stronger and better. Children, we should not get upset by them, but we should praise them as they make us stronger. Further explaining, the poet says that the wind blows out or finishes the weak fires. That is, the challenges and adversities break down weak people. But it is the strong people who emerge out to be stronger in times of adversities. Just as the wind helps to make the strong fires roar and glow more. So weak people are compared to weak fires and strong people are being compared to strong fires. Therefore the poet at the end says that friendship with the wind that is adversities of life is good for us.
Therefore, children, through this poem, a strong and meaningful message is conveyed that hardships and adversities in life only help us to become stronger and better. With this, we come to the end of the explanation of this highly symbolic and meaningful poem. Let us now have a look at the rhyming scheme of the poem. The entire poem is written in free verse, therefore there is no rhyming scheme. Now, let us have a look at the various poetic devices used in the poem. Personification is the first poetic device used in the poem. In this poem, wind has been personified. It is being referred to as you and he. The poet is treating the wind as a person. Let's have a look at the lines. You tore the pages of the books. You bought rain again. He makes strong fires roar and flourish. In these lines, you and he are being referred to the wind. Anaphora is the next poetic device in this poem. When a word is repeated at the start of two or more consecutive lines, the poetic device is called as anaphora. Let us have a look at the lines 2, 3 and 4. Don't break the shutters of the windows. Don't scatter the papers. Don't throw down the books on the shelf. These lines begin with the word don't. Now, let's have a look at the lines 6, 7 and 8. You tore the pages of the books. You bought rain again. You are very clever at poking fun at weaklings. These lines begin with the word you. Repetition is another poetic device used in this poem. The word crumbling is repeated many times to lay emphasis on the fact that the wind crushes everything that is weak. Alliteration is another poetic device. Alliteration is the repetition of a consonant sound in close connection. Examples of alliteration can be seen in line 12 and in line 13 of the poem. In line 12, the words wind and winnows and in line 13, the words won't and what are examples of alliteration. Symbolism is yet another poetic device in this poem. In this poem, the poet symbolizes wind with the adversities or hardships of life. With this, we come to the end of this poem. Hope you have all understood it. Thank you.